Hi, second grade, Mrs. Snyder here. This week we are going to do lesson number two for our free verse poetry study. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do three different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some guided practice with free verse poetry. So we are going to continue to learn about free verse poetry and we're gonna practice with it. And then we're going to learn about another trait of free verse poetry called repetition. And then we'll do a little bit of a review. All right, are you ready? Free verse poetry, let's review and let's practice. Last week, we learned four questions we ask ourselves when we are looking at a free verse poem. We ask ourselves what the topic is, that's what the poem is about. We ask ourselves, is there rhyming words? If there are no rhyming words, we have a free verse poem. We ask ourselves, are there lots of describing words? Are there words that the author used that help you get a really clear picture of the poem in your mind? And we also ask ourselves, is there figurative language? Is the author comparing the topic to something else, which will give us a good picture in our minds about what we're reading about? So let's practice with a poem. The poem that we're going to look at today is called Nature Walk. As I read the poem to you, I want you to think about those four questions. What is the topic? Does it have rhyming words? What are the describing words? Is there figurative language that compares the topic? I'll read slowly because I want you to listen to the poem, but I also want you to think about these questions because we're going to talk about them when we're done. Nature Walk. When you take a walk in the fall, leaves are like a blanket on the ground. They crunch under your feet with each step you take. When you take a walk in the fall, the air feels as cool as drops of rain on your cheek. It smells like clean cotton towels. When you take a walk in the fall, the outdoors will excite you. It's a wonderful time. Let's talk about those questions. First one, topic. What is the poem about? When we look at the title, Nature Walk, and throughout the poem, it talks about taking a walk in the fall. So we know the topic is walking outside, especially in the fall. This poem is about taking a walk in fall. That's our topic. Next question, are there rhyming words? If there are no rhyming words, then we're looking at a free verse poem. Now, remember what I said last week. Authors write in stanzas, not paragraphs when they're writing poetry. So this is stanza number one. This is stanza number two. And this is stanza number three. If I look at stanza number one, my lines end with fall, ground, feet, take. Do those words rhyme at all? No. My next stanza, I look at the words fall, as, cheek, towels. Are there any rhyming words with those? Nope. And my last stanza, stanza number three, I have the words fall, you, time. Do any of those rhyme? No. So no rhyme, got a free verse poem. The next question we ask ourselves, are there describing words? Are there words to help us get a clear picture of the topic? So remember the topic was taking a walk outside in the fall. Are there enough words that we can picture the poet doing that? Take a look at our text evidence. So the author says, the leaves crunch under your feet. Close your eyes. Picture walking across a bunch of leaves and they're crunching under your feet. Can you hear that sound? Good. That's what the author wants. You can open your eyes. In the second stanza, it says the air feels as cool as drops of rain on your cheek. 
close your eyes. You're outside in the fall. You feel the air on your cheeks and it's as cool as drops of rain hitting it. Can you feel it? I'm picturing that my cheeks are turning red because of the cool rain touching them. Open your eyes. And here the author talks about the smell. It smells like clean cotton towels. Close your eyes. You're outside. You're walking up across a bunch of leaves that are crunching. The air is cold or cool on your cheeks, just like rain. And now you take a deep breath of fresh air. And it's a really clean smell, like towels, right out of your dryer. Open your eyes. I would say those are some pretty good descriptions on things you can see, hear, and feel in the walk. But I would say the author did a good job at that. And then our last question is, is there figurative language? Is the author describing the topic, the walk? Are they comparing that topic to something else? So let's take a look. We've got three this time. Leaves are like a blanket on the ground. The author is comparing leaves to a blanket. The author isn't saying the leaves are a blanket. He's saying picture that these leaves are everywhere. I'm sorry, that sh the, 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 sh the author is a girl, Sarah Miller. She's saying these leaves are all over the ground, spread out like a blanket. Because we can picture a blanket in our mind, we can picture these leaves being all spread out. I have a better image in my mind. Instead of picturing a few leaves here and there, I'm picturing them really spread out like a blanket. It's figurative language because it's comparing the topic to something totally different. Right here is another piece of figurative language. The air feels as cool as drops of rain on your cheek. It's comparing the air to the feel of drops of rain. We know drops of rain can feel very cool when it hits your skin. So if we picture those, those drops of rain hitting our cheek, we can picture and we can feel how cool and crisp the air is. It's figurative language because it's comparing the air to the coolness of rain. They're two separate topics. And the last one, it smells like clean cotton towels. So they're talking about the air on their walk and they're comparing that air to clean cotton towels. The author is not saying the air is a towel. The author wants you to picture what a clean towel feels, smells like when you take it out of the dryer or you take it out of the linen closet to take a shower or a bath. It's a freshness. Because the author makes that comparison, we can get a better picture in our mind. Okay, now let's move on to our next thing. We're going to take a look at something called repetition. Some poets use repetition in their poems. This means they repeat words or phrases. Repetition can make poems sound like a song. So remember, there's no rhyming words. Rhyming words are typically what help it have a good rhythm or a good beat. But when there's repetition, that can replace it and that can give us the beat or the rhythm that we're looking for in poems. And the repetition of words and phrases can help us get more meaning out of the poem. So let's take a look. We're going right back here to the poem we worked on. And the author uses this phrase three times. When you take a walk in the fall, when you take a walk in the fall, when you take a walk in the fall, she starts each stanza with that line. She repeats it on purpose because she wants you to remind yourselves that you're taking a walk in the fall. Picture that in your mind because then she's going to give you a description about the leaves. When you take a walk in the fall, she wants you to remember what you're doing. You're not focusing on the leaves. You're focusing on that walk. 
And when you walk, you're feeling the air on your cheeks and you're smelling the cleanness of it. When you take a walk in the fall, the author's drawing your attention back to the fact that the topic is the walk. The topic isn't the air. When you walk in the fall, it's an exciting time. It's a wonderful time to spend outdoors. By repeating that phrase, the author draws our attention back to the topic, which is the walk. Hey, let's review what we learned. So this week, we have five different things we talked about with free verse poetry. I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Can you, let me move myself over here. Can you think about some of them? I'm going to set a goal for you. I want you to try to think of two of the things we talked about, two of the questions we asked ourselves. Do you have two? Okay. So we ask ourselves, what's the topic? That's what the poem is about. When we're reading a free verse poem, we need to know what the topic is. What is it about? We ask ourselves, is there rhyming words? If there are no rhyming words, then we have ourselves a good free verse poem. We ask ourselves, are there describing words? Is the author using lots of those descriptive words to give us a clear picture in our minds? Is there figurative language? Is the author comparing the topic to something else to help us get a clear picture? And is the author using any repetition? Is he or she repeating words or phrases throughout the poem to draw your attention back to something? All right, it's going to be your turn to practice. So you're going to open up the Google Docs activity for this lesson in Google Classroom. You have a poem and a couple of questions to answer. If you get stuck, you can come back to this video for some help. You can send me a message in Google Classroom or you can send me an email. Um, that's all for today. We will return next week for one more lesson on free verse poetry. So I will see you then. Bye-bye, second grade. Have a great day.